is going on ladies and gentlemen welcome back to auto auction rebuilds today i got an exciting one and kind of a disappointing one to share with you a 1929 ford roadster so here we have it the 1929 ford roadster that i picked up from acv auctions for eleven thousand five hundred dollars it was listed as a non-runner and i thought I've always wanted a, a tea bucket style of car, right? So I just decided to bite the bullet and go ahead and get it. I bought this while I was out of state, sight unseen, and here it is. It's not too shabby, honestly. It's actually pretty nice. It's got these interesting windows here. That's different. Don't know what those are for. It has tilt wheel, and it also has a, there we go, telescoping steering wheel. Very nice. Uh, tilt wheel, so you, well, it's not working right now, but it does It does have tilt wheel. <laughs> Just can't get it to do anything. Hazard lights, you got your ignition. It's got, is that a Hurst? I think that's a Hurst shifter. This seat comes up. Oh, it's a B&M, I'm sorry. It's a B&M shifter. It's got some big tires, center line wheels from the olden days. Back here. It's got a trans cooler, I believe. You got your battery and you got your fuel cell. Decent tires all the way around. And one of the best things about this is it's metal. That's not fiberglass, it's actually metal. Look at this old auto reverse Clarion unit right here. That's a Clarion guys. And here's your graphic equalizer. That thing is super cool. Um, again, listed as a non-runner. And this is the best part of it. You know what this is? This is an Oldsmobile 330 cubic inch V8 with an Offenhauser or Offenheiser, however you want to pronounce it. Aluminum intake manifold, which is that intake manifold is super hard to come by anymore. And a nice four barrel Edelbrock carburetor. Now, it didn't take me long to look this thing over and say I don't see any reason why it shouldn't run. Everything is there. It's even built, <laughs> this is the crazy part, on an actual Model T frame. This is a, a cover. This isn't real. So if you see it flexing, that's okay. This is not real. This is just to cover up the actual Model T frame that sits underneath of this. It is insane. So when you turn the wheel, watch this. Hold on, let me turn the key on. Okay, when I turn the wheel, watch what happens. Look at the engine. I don't know if you can see it, but the engine moves. The frame moves. <laughs> this is dangerous, man. <laughs> this is a very, very dangerous vehicle. Look at this. This is not safe. This is not safe at all. And it didn't take me long to uh, to figure it out. You know, this is, uh, it's an old build, um, obviously with that, that Oldsmobile engine, that 330, I think was only offered, I, Michael from Santa's Workshop told me, I can't remember now, like 66 and 67 or something like that. I think it's like a two or three year only type of engine. Um, it was listed as a non-runner, said it does not, start well I mean, there's only one way to find out you got to try it for yourself now put the battery on a battery tender let her charge another thing the choke does not seem to yeah okay choke doesn't work it's not functioning that's fine you don't need a choke it's 70 degrees in this shop huh wait a minute but it doesn't run. Yeah, it runs great. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend that I didn't know that. I absolutely knew that it ran because one of the first things I did when it showed up over a month ago, over a month ago, is I sat here and uh, I tinkered with it. And it runs just fine. Even with the choke wide open, it runs great. Now, we will have to take it out for a spin and see exactly how it drives. We also should test out the lights. 
Uh, I don't see headlights. No headlights. None. Tail lights? Uh-oh. We do have tail lights, so that's good. Um, another thing I noticed, I don't see any turn signals. No, there are none. Oh, it's got no turn signals. Oh, the headlights just came on. There they go. There they go. Oh, they're really dim. Uh, the noise you're hearing, don't worry. There's not something wrong with the engine. It's just, it's something, I believe it's the radiator. Yeah, see if I put my hand on it? It shuts up. Yeah, it's the radiator rattling. Ampers. There we go. Um, oil pressure, 40 PSI idling. Temperature, cold. Fuel, it doesn't have much. Unfortunately, the radio doesn't. Uh... Yeah, I guess the radio doesn't work. Damn. I'd love to bump some Aerosmith on this thing, right? Woo! Boy, she is stinking up this garage awful fast. Oh, wow. Yeah. Let's go ahead and shut this off, guys. Point is... Oh, look at those headlights. They got bright. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. Let's give it a little throttle. All right. Well, she starts... That's a good sign. I'm gonna have to latch up this back here. It came with this weird little window over here. Um, unfortunately, one of the, uh, and it came with this, this fire starter air breather. Those things are awful. You should never use those. Came with these right here. And unfortunately, one of them was half broken off when I got it. So I ended up just taking the whole thing off to make sure that this thing didn't get damaged any more than it already was. Now, I'm gonna be, honest with you most of the cars that i buy from this auction um the the seller has 30 days to get you a title all right that's just normal that's how it is the seller has 30 days and it's not a big deal i've never run into a problem with this before so it didn't seem like a big deal to me but you know generally speaking as you approach that 30 day period uh, the title should arrive you should get the title within that 30 days and in the case of this one it didn't happen well, I knew that it probably needed a carburetor, so I bought a brand new Edelbrock AVS2 that's in my truck currently that cost me $475 after tax. I never put it on because I was waiting to make sure I got the title. Well, guess what happened? That's right, the title never arrived, so I have now filed a 48-hour unwind notice with ACV Auctions, letting them know that my intent is to unwind the deal of this car. I mean, the car actually does run. What did it need? Nothing. I don't know why they said it didn't run. It didn't want to run when I got it. I assume it had been sitting for quite a while. I poured some fresh gas in the tank, a little bit of fuel down the, down the throttle body, down the car carburetor and she cranked right off and she's been running ever since so it probably just sat for a long time but i mean it actually runs great how does it drive though i have no idea i have not taken it out on the street yet but we're going to right now i'm currently waiting i've got about another hour before we find out whether or not they accept my unwind deal which means i would get a full refund of the car fees, and shipping. So I guess why we are waiting to find out the verdict, uh, I mean, I don't see where there's any choice, really, uh, but to give me my money back. But you do have to give them their time, and we are at the point where, you know, two hours from now, we're going to know one way or another. So I feel like before we get that answer, we should definitely take it out and just see how it drives. So why don't I open up this door because I'm dying of carbon monoxide poisoning. Let me move this bike out of the way and let's take her for a spin. And, and maybe Roxy will come walking in. Maybe not. We still got some daylight left, guys. Okay, let's move some things around and let's get this bad boy out on the road. All right, are you ready for this? Oh man. <laughs> this thing is pretty cool though. All right, check the brakes. Oh, she stops. Oh yeah, she stops. All right. It's a tight fit in here right now, guys. I got a lot of, 
Uh oh, I'm not gonna make it. Yeah, I'm not gonna make it. Uh, you know what? I better focus on driving and I'll focus on recording here in just a second. All right, guys. I think we're good now. Oh, the steering's kind of heavy for something this small. Oh man, this car is sketchy. Horn? No. Oh, oh boy. I don't feel like this is the smartest thing I've ever done. All right. Well, it's too late to turn back now. Let's see what happens. Easy does it, girl. Oh, ow, wow. Oh man. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh dude, this is epic. Oh, ow. Oh man. <laughs> the bumps hurt. The bumps really hurt. This is this is kind of painful. No turn signals. I hope to God the brake lights are working. Alright. Well, I didn't want to take it like out on the main road until we took it down some of these back roads just to make sure it would stop and turn and you know it wasn't gonna blow up i feel like we're pretty safe now so i guess we'll just take her out on the main road it seems to shift just fine the seat hurts really bad it feels like the damn thing is rattling apart this this thing is rough it is really really rough okay we're only going 25 miles an hour let's get out on the uh, on the road here if i can live through this and uh let's get her going a little bit faster i don't know how fast i want to go honestly this thing is this ride's absolutely awful oh ooh, she coughed she didn't like me giving her too much throttle brakes feel really good though i mean really good these brakes feel awesome really they almost feel like power brakes this is nice this is really nice all right here we go no traffic either direction let's oh okay give her the beans I feel like this car could roll off the road. It could go in any direction. I'm afraid to go too fast in it. Yeah, this is something, guys. Everybody should take a ride in a tea bucket to get an idea of the experience. I highly recommend it. All right. We're moving. I know it's windy. And we're not moving very fast. I'm only going 50 five right now <laughs> this is great I'm gonna turn around up here we're not gonna do our our typical 10 mile run I am doing 60 miles an hour in this car this supposedly doesn't run that's wild I think I could turn around here let me see Look at all the cows. Moo! Alright. Oh, these brakes are phenomenal. I'm serious. These brakes are absolutely amazing, guys. Let's see if I can turn around here without scraping. There we go. Oh. Uh-oh. 
we've got front brakes, we don't have back brakes. You find stuff like that out in the gravel really, really quick. Yeah, the front brakes locked up, the back brakes did absolutely nothing. Oh, good God. This thing is a bear. There's a car coming and it will get back on the road. This is nerve wracking. This is seriously nerve wracking. Okay. There we go. Oh, come on, girl. Get it. Get it. Get it. Oh, wow. Woo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, I felt like I almost lost it there. The front end hit a bump. And it felt like it just tried to come out from under me. This thing is a disaster. This is a disaster on wheels. All right, guys. Why don't we get back to the shop where you guys can actually hear what I'm trying to say without all this wind noise. Cross your fingers and pray to God that I actually make it back. Well, I made it back and I am in one piece, but this thing is, this thing is terrifying. It is absolutely terrifying. I really do though. I recommend if you ever have the opportunity to take a ride in a tea bucket, definitely take somebody up on that and experience it because it is really something. So now that we're back and she's good and warmed up by now, we can see the fuel is sitting just around an eighth of a tank. Temperature is just under 140. I find that very difficult to believe, but perhaps it has no thermostat in it. Oil pressure at idle is about 30 PSI, perfectly normal. Ampers are sitting just over zero if you give it some throttle. She goes up a hair. And uh, this is crazy, but the odometer on this shows 10,226 miles. Uh, I don't know. Do you think somebody actually drove this thing 10,000 miles? I find that hard to believe. Listen to it though when you hit the throttle. It sounds healthy. It really does. I'm gonna push that steering wheel back down there a little bit. She sounds really, really healthy, guys. The engine runs absolutely great. Listen to that. It just purrs. Definitely need some work on the back brakes since they don't work at all. But I'm really surprised it doesn't ride all that bad considering what this thing is. I mean, it's a tea bucket and it actually rides pretty dang decent. The seat's not the most comfortable. Uh, there's no padding here. It's just a bar against your back. So as you hit bumps, your back is constantly hitting this bar. Uh, that's kind of painful. Um, this shifter keeps coming apart. It's been like that since I got it. There's definitely adequate leg room in this. This is actually a very long tea bucket. I've got another one, a yellow um, 1923 tea bucket that's a kit car. It's fiberglass and it's got probably, the engine's got to be 500 horses in that one. And it's much shorter and it has the big Mickey Thompsons on the back. That car is absolutely insane. Honestly, that car has too much motor for the car this one i think is ideal it's got a nice relatively powerful motor i don't know what the horsepower or torque specs on a 1967 uh, olds 330 is but i'm sure it's probably right around 300 horsepower and that feels very very nice in this car i mean honestly it feels perfect in my yellow tea bucket that engine is a monster. It's a nightmare to keep the rear well, rear wheels uh, in traction. It, it, it's it's a it's a scary car to drive. This one, this feels really nice, very tame and 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 just relatively decent. Unfortunately, I don't think the build quality was the greatest on this one, but uh, it is what it is. No dieseling when you shut it off. Let's see if it fires back up. Uh oh, there it goes and smooth as butter. 
I almost hate to see this little cargo. I actually really, really like this. Um, Santa's workshop and I had already discussed a new paint scheme. Um, we wanted to sand this all down and it's really cool because the interior snaps off on this one. Um, so you don't have to worry about masking off the whole interior. You just unsnap it. And we were gonna sand this thing down and give it a nice appropriate red paint job, like not metallic flake, like fire engine red paint job. I thought it was gonna look really, really slick. But again, without a title, I can't do anything to it at all. So why don't we return here in just a little bit when I find out if we're actually gonna have a title for this car and keep it or if the title is not coming and we're sending it back. Well, the verdict is in. I just got an email from ACV Auctions and it says that my un unwind request has been approved. It said, if you still want to unwind your contract to let them know and they will back the deal out. And of course I replied to the email and said, yes, without a title, there's nothing that I can or would want to do with this vehicle. Um, very strange. I've used ACV many times. I've had no problems with them, but I want to just stress that it's not just ACV. Most auctions work this way. Most of the time, whoever you're buying the vehicle from has 30 days to provide you with a title. And if you're buying a car from California, they have 45 days to provide you with a title. So in my case, the 30 days are up. I was not given a title. And apparently the dealer that sold this never responded to ACV's request to get the title. So at this point, ACV said they will be sending a transporter to come pick this vehicle up and they will ship it back. And I will get a full refund for the purchase price of the car, as well as the shipping cost, any auction fees, et cetera, et cetera. So looks like we will be getting our money back. I'm pretty sure this one came out after transportation, which was like $1,300. It came from North Carolina. Um, plus the 11.5, plus the auction fees. I think it came out to somewhere around $13,500 for this car, which truthfully is kind of crazy because the yellow tea bucket that is fully built fiberglass, like truly a built car that has a brand new motor, a brand new transmission, that car insanely was 14.5. 14.5. Now out the door, it came over to a little over 15 because uh, shipping was from Texas, so it wasn't nearly as much, and the auction fees were only like three or four hundred dollars. So you know we probably have 15. They gave me a 200 dollars credit for no apparent reason, and then they gave me a 300 dollars discount because one of the brake lines was ruptured on that car, and the brake lines are custom made. So total it was 14.5, but then I got 500 dollars off, so that makes it 14,000 plus shipping. So yeah, I'm going to say we probably have 15 grand tops into that car. So 15 versus 13.5 for this. Which one would you choose? I'm going to miss it. I really like the little car. It's a lot of fun, and it's a great old-school build. Some of you old-timers, I hate to call you old-timers, but you're going to see this. You're going to know exactly what this is, and you're probably going to remember a buddy of yours building something similar to this. It's, it's a great classic build of a tea bucket. And I was really hopeful that we were going to get to keep it, put a fresh carburetor on it, do a tune-up and some other stuff to it, and get this thing just ripping right on down the road. Unfortunately, that is not in the cards for this one. So even though we're getting rid of one, don't forget we have an actual Model T sitting over here that needs a lot of love and attention. She needs a full set of tires, which I have. New inner tubes, which I also have. All the parts to redo the fuel system, which I also have. I would really love to do something to clean up these wheels and make them look just a little bit fresher for that new set of tires. So that may be something we attempt to do as well. Unfortunately, I don't see myself holding on to this Model T for an exceptionally long period of time. It definitely needs a bath. It was a barn find and it had been sitting for many, many years. And I think that's evident from all the dust and dirt on it. I've got a new belt for it as well and the new fuel system and everything. I want to get this back together so that we can take it and attempt a road trip. When I say road trip, I mean, maybe 10 miles tops. <laughs> I don't think I'd wanna try to take it any further than that. This car was in a movie. It's a, an X movie car. 
And I've got all the parts, the seats and everything. I did get it to finally run after quite a bit of work. Um, so now it's just a matter of getting it cleaned up, putting it all back together, and then probably sending it down the road. I will most likely send this through, I don't know. I might send this through Copart. I might send this one through Insurance Auto Auctions when I'm done. I'm just not sure. Unfortunately, these, these toys take up a lot of space and I don't have a big shop. It's a 30 by 40, so I've got 1,200 square feet and that lift takes up quite a bit of it. Generally speaking, the best I'm going to fit in here are maybe four cars. I can fit two right there and two right here and my bike. So. I can't keep everything because there's just not enough room in the shop. And when it comes to things like tea buckets, they have no top. So they can't just sit outside in the weather or they're going to get damaged or destroyed. Believe it or not, tea buckets are still made of wood, just like the Model T. The floors in these are actually wood. So if you leave them out in the rain and stuff, yes, they're going to warp, deteriorate, and fall apart. Um, so I can't keep all of these cars just sitting in the shop, I need the space to do some other stuff. So we'll probably be sending that one down the road. Stay tuned. I'm gonna be getting back to the Model T here in the very near future, and we're gonna to try to get the tires and everything on it, get it sorted out, and hopefully she can drive down the road under her own power. I think that is gonna be a wrap, guys. I don't know if you're tired of the old cars or not. If I had it my way, I would deal with these old cars all day, every day. I would scrap doing 80s and 90s and 2000s, and I would scrap doing the new vehicles, and I would probably just stick to the simplistic design of the old cars. I love them. They sound great, they ride great, they feel great. People love to look at them driving down the road. I thoroughly enjoy working on them. Unfortunately, my subscribers do not seem to have the same <laughs> enjoyment that I do with these classic cars, and that is perfectly fine. I obviously did not start or build my channel on 1920s, 30s, 40s, and 50s vehicles, so I don't expect everybody to want to see this type of stuff on the channel. However, there is a dream car of mine that I'm working really, really hard to obtain it is an expensive one, and it'll probably be the last expensive one I buy this year. It is a 1965, I believe, uh, reproduction. It is a Speed Formance. I think that's the name of it. Speed Formance or Proformance. I don't remember. It is a Carroll Shelby Cobra. It's a replica, obviously, because a million plus dollars for the real deal I don't have. It is a beautiful, beautiful car that has a five-speed, if I remember correctly, five-speed manual transmission, somewhere around 500 horsepower from the 427 under the hood, an independent rear suspension. It's got a shatterproof bell housing. The thing has the knockoff wheels, 15s. Beautiful, beautiful car for $68,000, and I am working really hard to try to secure that car, assuming it's even still available. That price is very low for the amount of car you're getting for that kind of money, guys. So stay tuned. Hopefully that might be something you would be interested in. I don't know where the car is at. I'll probably have to have it shipped, but I would love to bring that to the channel and share it with you. So do me a favor. If you enjoy this content, hit the thumbs up button and let me know that you enjoyed the video. Share the video with your friends on social media. It would go a long way to help support the channel and I would truly appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.